How's it going everybody and welcome back to our enterprise practice lab. So in this video we're going to be going through and doing the Nexus distribution and catalyst access portion of our lab. Um, so this is going to be similar to what we did in the catalyst distribution and access similar operation except for in this one we're going to be leveraging the VPC or virtual port channel capability of Nexus and connecting a port channel down to switch 11 which is going to be our access layer switch. If you're not familiar with VPC it's a chassis aggregation technique that is specific to the Nexus uh, class of switches. Um, essentially it's like stacking in, in a sense or for those of you that have ever dealt with the larger catalyst platforms that do VSS or virtual switching system. Very reminiscent of that, except for stacking in VSS, it's a single control plane, where in VPC, it's each device is independently operated, so you're not logging into one device and having control of several. You have to still maintain the switches individually. But that's okay. So we're gonna go through instead of VPC and get all of the details, <coughs> excuse me, that we need in play so we can get VPC operational and then we're going to create a couple VLANs and all that good stuff so that we end up making Nexus 1 and 2 the default gateway for our configuration. With that being said, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and get out of the way and we're going to start on the process. So we're going to start on Nexus 1 and 2 and then work our way down to switch 11 and all that good stuff that goes along with it. So I'm going to go ahead and log into Nexus 1 and Essentially, let me actually let me take a moment here and walk you through basically what it is we're going to have to do. So it says enable Nexus 9K1 and 2 to support multi-chassis Ether channel gateway redundancy with industry standard protocol and SBI support. So one key difference between Nexus and Catalyst is Catalyst, uh, depending on the version of code you run and your licensing level, will determine what features are available to you. Nexus also has a licensing model as well. Um, the difference is though not all the features are immediately available to you if you want to run a particular capability you need to enable the feature and some features require the installation of a feature set and then you can then install the features uh, once you install the feature you can turn the feature on so for example something that I don't see very much anymore is the fabric extender or the FEX FEX and FEX was essentially a way to do remote line card connectivity. So if you needed more ports on your switch, instead of you going out and buying a brand new switch for that particular deployment, you would simply buy a fabric extender, which is allowing you to do port density increasing. So you'd be able to add more ports to your switch by simply plugging in a couple of cables to your existing switch. And then you'd be able to gain more port density. It's not something that's, uh, I don't see it much anymore. It's still out there, um, but the difference is, and, and the Ni Nexus 9K does support the FEX parent switch capability. So that's one of those feature sets that you'd have to turn on. And if we were to take a quick jump up here, there's this, you have the install, install feature set, and you'd have FCOE, FCOE, NPV, and MPLS. So at some point down the road, I will be covering MPLS on Nexus, but just because I want to be more thorough with the platform as a whole. And you have fiber channel over Ethernet, and then you have uh, fiber channel over, over Ethernet NPV or node port virtualization. So those are storage capabilities. I'm not going to, and there's NPIV, node port ID virtualization. Those are storage specific techniques. And unfortunately, if you were to say FCOE, right, and come in here, hit the enter key, it says FCOE is not supported on this particular line card because all I have is Ethernet line cards. Do you need a fiber channel specific line card so that you can enable the fiber channel encapsulation? Because Ethernet and fiber channel are two different things. Uh, even if I was to try to do dash uh, NPV, it's, uh, oh, that, that one will work. Okay, cool. I actually had never tried that. Um, but then you do feature set and you would type in FCOE MPV. I don't think that's gonna work. I don't know, I've never actually tried it. Um, oh, it worked, okay, cool. Um, and then it gives me a 
This feature requires an FCO MPV package. Okay, no worries. So then you would do feature uh, feature FCOE. Maybe it's already enabled. Uh, maybe it's, hold on a second, FCOE. Oh, FCOE is there now. Okay, cool. Um, I have literally never done this before, so I was like, oh, let me just see if that's available, just to show you what it would look like. So there's that. Um, and then you have FCOE over FEX HIF interfaces. I'm actually not really sure what that means. But anyway, you get my point. So I'm actually going to um, no feature set. Oh, okay, so it's a brand new config and then we'll say no feature set. There we go. So there we have it. So F, F yeah, uh, feature FC is now gone. So I turned the, my, you can no install it and then it takes the feature. The moment you uninstall a feature or you turn a feature off, the ability to configure it goes away. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through some of the, the enablement that we need to go through. So the first one we have to go through and do is multi-chassis ether channel. So what does that mean? VPC or virtual board channel. So I'm gonna type in feature and there's a bunch of them here, right? I'm gonna type in here, it's gonna be VPC. VPC and hit the enter key. That feature now gets turned on so I'll be able to create the VPC domain. It also says gateway redundancy. So it says gateway redundancy with industry standard protocol, which means feature VRRP. So we'll turn VRRP on, and then it says SPI support. So if we do, if we try to go to interface VLAN, guess what? The VLAN SPI capability is not here, which I thought was actually kind of interesting first time I did it. So that's another feature interface VLAN that we have to turn on and go from there. Okay, great. So all of that is done. Now what's actually interesting about this is if we, uh, when we go to do the VXLAN portion and the back-to-back -back VPC in the next video, these are uh, the capabilities we're gonna have to enable on all the switches we configure. So just an interesting factoid about that. Okay, now that I've got the SBI and I had the features turned on, the next step would be to go through and do the VRF. So like I said, I haven't done a, d a ton of of uh, detail on what, how VPC works. I'm not going to spend much more time than I already have, but um, if we were to, normally if you're gonna do VPC, you're gonna need a keep alive. And the keep alive essentially is nothing more than a ping. Hey, are you there? Uh, hey, are you there? You know, and then you get a reply back. Yep, I'm here. Okay, good. So it basically is a way to make sure that whoever you're talking to is still awake. Um, no, no different than like an OSPF hello or a HSRP hello or a PIM message sent out, same difference. So essentially what we're gonna need to do now, you can connect your VPC peer keep alive to the management interface, which by default is in the VRF. So if we were to do a uh, show uh, interface status, the management interface isn't actually gonna show up here. If we were to do a show IP interface brief VRF management, we're gonna see that the interface actually isn't being used at the moment. There is an interface available to it, right? If we were to, let's say for example, we wanted to connect these guys together, right? I could come down here and hit the drop down and go to management zero. Well, if management zero is not plugged in, therefore it won't actually show up in the uh, my config. So I won't be able to mo uh, mess with that. Give that a second to load back up. Okay, perfect. So, normally you'd use the management interface. Some customers are okay with using the management interface for the VPC Pure Keep, uh, Pure Keep Alive, others are not, and they wanna do, and if you do it that way, it's called out of band VPC. If you want the cable, the, the Nexus, which is wired directly to each other, on uh, maybe a data interface, you can totally do that, or back to back via the management interfaces, if you don't plan on doing that, uh, using out of band management then it's referred to, referred to as in-band VPC. In-band VPC means that you're cabling to a management, uh, to a data port, or you're cabling to the management interfaces, and it's back-to-back. -back. Either way will work. We're doing basically in-band uh, VPC. I actually noticed that I have a, delete that real quick. And, Oh, I 
and to put that right there. Let me go ahead and create another one real quick. I just happened to notice that that wasn't set up correctly. Okay, perfect. Okay, let me go back over to my CLI. Okay, um, so that's essentially the details you needed to be aware of for VPC. We're gonna be doing in-band VPC. So ethernet one slash one on every one of our switches that's gonna be doing VPC will be a um, our VPC peer keep alive. What that means is I need to go create a VRF. A VRF, a virtual routing and forwarding instance, it allows me to create routing tables beyond the default route or the default VRF or the global routing table. So show IP route, this is your global table, right? Um, this is the default VRF, VRF default right there. So if I have that there, I need to create another VRF that's going to be for dedicated for connectivity between the 9Ks so that they can talk to each other. So I'm going to type in VRF context. Let me go ahead and get out of the way so you guys can see it better. VRF context, and I'm going to type in uh, peer keep alive. Okay, now that that's been created, that's literally all I need to do. So I just need to go type in interface eth one slash one. And if I do a show interface status, all these interfaces are already in routed mode. So that's good for me. All I need to do here is type in VRF member is going to be uh, peer keep alive. So if there was an IP address on the interface, it gets removed because you're moving it from one routing table into another. And then all I have to do here is type in 10.1.2.1 slash 30, no shut, and do the exact same thing on the other side. So let me go to Nexus 9K2. Let me go ahead and just do a uh, show CLI history unformatted for the last 10 commands. That should be enough. Let me do 20. Yep, so let's do all of that up to this point. Let's go to Nexus 9K2. Go ahead and log into 9K2. Go to global config. Let me copy pasta. Now it's going to, it's enabling all those features. And eventually it's going to create my. There we go, and we'll just do a dot two, and then no shut. Okay, so that's part. That's that part. So let me go ahead and type in uh, logging console seven. The same thing over here. Well, essentially, by doing that logging con seven, I want to be able to see things as they're happening. Okay, status messages right here. So the first thing I'm going to go do is I'm gonna go ahead and create the VPC domain. So I'm gonna type in VPC domain 12. And then there is, it's uh, telling me, giving me some notifications saying that the VPC peer switch configuration is disabled. Please make sure to change Spanish for your bridge priority as per recommended guidelines. It's not specific, but it does tell you you need to be aware of things. And the bridge uh, command will come into play once we create the, v, the, the network statement. So what we're gonna do, which is bridge assurance, so we're going to go ahead and first thing I have to do once I'm underneath the VPC domain is set the, the peer keep alive, peer keep alive destination is going to be 10.1.2.2 from a source of 10.1.2.1 inside of VRF peer keep alive. And that's literally all I have to type in to do the basics of it, but I'm also going to type in peer dash peer switch peer dash gateway, and then layer three peer router. Once all that's in play, I'm in good shape. So if we do a show and I'm gonna type in role, priority is gonna be one. And there we go. So that's going to show run VPC. So those are the things that you need to have on this switch in order for that to work. I'm essentially going to take and do the exact same thing on switch two. Because if I come over here and I type in show VPC, it's going to tell me that there's all kinds of problems. Failed, it's down, peer link not configured, so on and so forth. That's going to be the next step we do. So I'm going to go ahead and type in VPC domain 12. I'm going to come in here and do a peer keep alive. is going to be to destination 10.1.2.1. Source is 10.1.2.2 VRF peer keep alive. Say peer switch, peer gateway, and then layer three peer router. These are just 
command and then roll priority of two. These are just commands that I like to type in um, in the event. Uh, the moment I throw an SVI onto any of these switches and there's the potential where I need to route between either one of the switches, I always throw that type of stuff in there. Okay, now that that's done, if we do a show VPC and we can see that the peer is alive. Okay, that's the first thing. It can ping across this point to point. Perfect. Now the next thing I have to do is create a peer link. The peer link is going to be ether, uh, eth12 and eth13. And this is going to be the communication between the switches that uh, is needed in order for everything to work the way that I need it to. So essentially the peer link, the peer keep alive is obvious, right? It's just a hello. However, in the event that your the peer link is going to be a port channel that is configured between the switches in order to do propagation of control plane information and also to be a link between the two switches for data forwarding. Now in the event, uh, the peer link uses a capability known as CFS, Cisco Fabric Services over Ethernet, and it basically just replication protocol. It replicates everything that's on one Nexus switch to the other. And so if I was to go ahead and get out of the way and come back over here to this side, if we were to look at Ethernet 1 slash 2 and 1 slash 3, do show interface status, these interfaces are currently in routed mode. So I'm going to type in interface eth 1 slash 2 through 3, and I'm going to type in switch port. I'm going to type in switch port mode of trunk. And then I do a channel group, and I'll type in 100 mode of active. Okay. LACP process, that's, oh, that's right, I forgot about that. Uh, and um, feature LACP, forgot about that. Let me go ahead and enable that on Nexus 9K1. Uh, feature um, LACP. So it says operational layer three peer router, not yet. Um, we'll get to that at some point. Um, there's some stuff not working yet. So let me go ahead and type in interface ETH one slash two through through three. We'll type in switch port, switch port mode of trunk. And then we're gonna type in channel group 100 mode of active. And do the exact same thing on this side. There we go. Okay, no operational members. We'll give that a couple of minutes to do its thing. So we're gonna do Show interface status disabled. Okay, so we have to no shut the ports. That's right, I forgot about that. So, and then no shut. So the interfaces all come up, and then we can see that communication is going back and forth, and everything looks pretty good. So, if we do a show interface status again, we're going to see that they're connected in the trunk mode. If we do a show VPC, we're going to see that. Peer link not configured. Oh, and so that's the next thing. So peer link, you need to configure the port channel itself as the peer link. So interface port channel 100, we're gonna type in VPC peer link. And what that does is it applies the spanning tree port type of network to that interface. So we do a, sh so it's still trying to figure out itself. And we're gonna do the same thing over here. We're gonna type in uh, interface port channel 100, VPC peer link. Just so it's configured on both sides. And if we come back over on over on here, we're gonna do a show run interface port channel 100. This spanning tree port type network is what does this, and this is what basically enables um, bridge assurance, and it makes both switches look like one switch downstream. Okay, so we're gonna do a show interface status again, connected, and I'm gonna do a show VPC. And it's saying that everything looks good. Peer adjacency formed, okay. Peer is alive, and we have configuration and consistency status going back and forth. Everything looks good. So everything is doing what it's supposed to do. Okay. Now, up to this point, our VPC is now configured. The next thing for us to go through and do is to configure basically the rest of what we need to. So let's go back over to this guy. And we have a bunch of other information to do. So we've got this guy's good. This guy's good. 
This guy's good. This guy's good. This guy's good. Um, pure router. This guy's good. Now we need to configure Ethernet 1 slash 4 and both switches downstream to switch 11 as a and port channel. Now normally what I do is I like to create a port channel of 50, 100, whatever number you want to use. Because as I start creating my port channels downstream, I want to start using port channel based off the interface number. So that the interface and the port channel have the same ID, so I'll know which interfaces I'm using. So I'll port channel 1 for Ethernet 1 slash 1, port channel 2 for Ethernet 1 slash 2, so on and so forth, so that it ties. That just makes sense to me in my brain. That's how my brain, my OCD will trigger if it's not. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in interface eth 1 slash 4. I'm going to type in switch port, switch port mode of trunk, and I'm going to type in channel group 1 mode of active. And then I had to go uh, no shut the interface. And then I type in interface port channel 1, VPC 1. Okay. Now that I've done that, I've turned VPC on that interface. So what's cool now is I get to do a show CLI history unformatted for the last 10. So now I get to come down here and grab all these lines of config. Dump them on switch 2. If I do a show VPC, we can see that everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and just paste this in, give it a couple minutes to do its thing. And then I'm going to go down to switch 11. Switch 11 is squawking at me now saying, hey guy, you know, you got a bunch of issues here. So I'm going to type in here, host name is going to be switch 11. The interface range, gig 0 slash 0 through 11 is going to be, I'm going to say no negotiation auto and then duplex full. Just so that it'll... Uh, stop trying to figure out what's going on and then I'm going to type in here switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q and then switch port mode of trunk and then I'm going to go ahead and type in channel protocol is going to be LACP and then the channel group will be one mode active so now the port channel is being created. The interfaces bounce. They come back up. And then the port channel comes online. Okay, now if I go back over here to Nexus 9K1, I can see port, uh, port channel 1 is up. If I do a show VPC, show VPC, I'll have one active port channel. Perfect. Now I've got two VLANs I need to create. I need to go ahead and create 20 and 21. So I'm going to go ahead and create VLAN 21 name is going to be VLAN 21. Now what will end up happening is after a period of time this information will go away and then we're going to go ahead and say VLAN uh, 20 and v the name is going to be VLAN 20. Exit out of that and then I'm good to go. So if we do a show VPC, you'll soon see uh, VLAN 20 being allowed. But right now it's trying to figure its stuff out. Show CLI history unformatted last 10. Grab those few lines of config. 9K2. Copy pasta. Now once that's done, and you notice that it didn't allow the port channel to come online until both VLAN, the VLANs were on both sides. Because what's happening is they're exchanging information with each other and they're saying, okay, one side's got it. So if I was, let's say I was to create over here, let me show you what that means. If I was to say VLAN 1, uh, let's say 25. Name VLAN 25. Okay, something very basic like that. If I come in here and I do, let me bring this down just a little bit just so you guys can see it. Let me go ahead and get out of the way. If you do a show VPC, you're going to see that 20 and 21 are there. But if I hit the up arrow and do consistency parameters and I say global, what you're going to see is allowed VLANs right here. You're going to see 20, 21, 25, but local suspended VLANs is 25. 
2021 are not are uh, enabled but notice on the peer because they're exchanging information now 9k1 knows that it's got 1 20 21 and 25 and then um but 1 and 20 through 21 on the peer so unless you go through and if we look at vlans and hit the enter key we're going to see that uh, these are type 2 so you are sorry these are type 1 so we can see everything else is looking good. However, if we look at the global ones, it's saying that there's a mismatch. So the moment I come in here and I say no VLAN 25, that will clear this problem up. Now they're good to go. And if I do a show VPC, I can see that it's allowed. So port channel one is allowed to send the traffic. If I do a show interface trunk, we're going to see that right here. VLANs in Spanish tree forwarding state not pruned. Port channel 1 and port channel 100. Okay, so now that I've got that done, I'm going to go ahead and move to the next stage of the process. And we're going to go ahead and configure switch 11 appropriately. I'm going to say VLAN 20, name VLAN 20. VLAN 21, name VLAN 21, there we go. And that's going to create that, and then I'm going to type an interface gig 0 slash 2, switch port access VLAN 20, switch port mode of access, spanning tree port type, port fast, edge. Or port fast will work too, but edge. We'll do that config. And then we're going to do gig 3, 21, just like that. Okay, so now I get to go over and configure my endpoints PC 72 and 73. So I'll go all the way to the right. Seventy-two and seventy-three. Did I not? It's way over here. This guy needs to be over here. Sometimes they're out of order. 76R48. Bring him over here. 74, 72. Perfect. Okay, so let me go ahead and get these guys configured real quick. Let's have interface, uh, no IP routing. We'll type in host name is going to be PC672. Uh, um, IP default gateway of 10.1.20.1. Interface gig 0 slash 0. IP address here will be 10.1.20.72 slash 24 mask. No shut. Do right. Configure 73 real quick. Host name is PC73, no IP routing, IP default gateway 10.1.21.73, I'm sorry, dot one. Interface gig 0 slash 0, IP address here will be 10.1.21.73 slash 24, no shut. And then do right. Okay, so now I'm going to drive all the way back to the left. And I'll configure 9K1 and 9K2 for VRRP and show run pipe include the uh, feature. Okay, that's been done. Okay, cool. So I need to go into interface VLAN 20. And I need to type in IP address here will be 10.1.20. I'll type in, uh, I'll just do three here, slash 24. Uh, VRP, um, and we'll type in 20, and then we'll type in IP, this will be address of 10.1.20.1, and then for this guy here, we'll set the priority for 20, actually no, we'll type in preempt like that, and there you got to no shut it. 
and then no shut the, the interface as well. And then we're going to do a show IP interface brief. So that's up, that's good. And we're going to do the same thing for interface VLAN 21. IP address here will be 10.1.21.3 slash 24 VRP 21. Address will be 10.1.20.1 or 20 or sorry, I meant to say, sorry, 21. That's what I meant to say. 21.1, 21.1. And then we'll do a priority of 150 on this side. And then we're going to no shut the VRRP instance and then no shut the interface. Show IP interface brief. Show VRRP summary. And right now it is. Let me do a show run interface VLAN 21. and 20. Perfect. Okay, so now I get to go over and do the same thing on 9K2. So I'm going to go to uh, interface VLAN 20. IP address here will be 10.1.20.2 slash 24. No shut. And then VRP 20. Address will be 10.1.20.1. Priority here will be 150. No shut. Interface VLAN 21. IP address here will be 10.1.20.2 slash 21 slash 24. No shut. VRP address or uh, 21 address will be 10.1.21.1, and we're good to go there. And then we're going to no shut that. Okay, so now that we've got that in play, if we jump back over here to this guy and do a show VRP status uh, summary, VRP, we can see that. Master is us, which is exactly what we're looking for and over here. And we do a show VRP. It's just the opposite. Cool. So now if I ping 10.1.21.73, there it goes. It responded. Now if I come over here and ping 10.1.20.72, awesome sauce. So everything's working in that respect. And that's really what I expect to happen in a situation like that where I have the connectivity set up the way that I do. So now that I have all of those configurations in place and everybody's happy and the VPC is working, if we do a show Mac address table dynamic, we're going to see a couple of devices coming in through port channel one, which is what we want to see. Okay, that's pretty much it, ladies and gentlemen. We set up a VPC. We have the connectivity downstream and everybody's happy. Everything's looking good. So that's really at the end of the day what you want to have. So I'm going to go ahead and just save the configuration real quick on all these devices considering it's like right there. And on switch 11, do right. Okay, so with that being said, um, just a quick recap of what we did. So just, let's just go back through our checklist to make sure everything's done. We set a multi-chest ether channel gateway redundancy. We uh, mul gateway redundancy with industry standard protocol and SPI support. We set up a pure keep alive in those subnet uh, with that subnet Ethernet one slash two and one slash three for routing exchange between uh, exchange information between the switches. VPC domain twelve. Both switches should appear as a single switch to switch 11. And that's one thing I need, just need to quick down, come down here and do a show CDP neighbor. Um, I'm only gonna see the attached connections. You're not gonna see the upstream switches. Um, 
it's not that they don't exist, right? If we come down here and we do a show CDP neighbor, we're gonna see that switch 11 is attached to gig four. But because of the fact that nine, uh, the Nexus is in the VPC, it basically isn't going to run CDP on that interface. Or, you know, it's uh, two different devices, but it'd be confusing to switch 11 to see two different device IDs. And Nexus 9K1 should be the primary device, which we did that. The port channel's there. Gig 0 slash 0 and 1 are configured as trunks, and uh, there's a port channel set up. We have VLAN 20 and 21 set up. Downstream so interfaces on a switch 11 should be configured to support endpoints and begin forwarding immediately, which we have. All right. Well, I would have gotten all the points for that section as well. So even though there were some specific details in there that weren't laid out, there would, those specific details, like the actual interface IPs, would be in the configuration for you to do. They would tell you what IP to use, that type of stuff, because they have to. If they're expecting you to configure it a certain way, they have to give you specific uh, specifics, and there'd be no guessing. Like, they wouldn't say, use a number between four and six. Right, they're, they're not gonna do, at least, I would hope that they wouldn't be that read between the lines but everybody would know it's a five. Anyway, um, if you guys have any questions, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch all of you guys in the next video. Have a good one, guys.